Hello everyone. Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. Today is another episode of Financial Stewardship. I started a series talking about prosperity, but specifically, we delve deep into the principles of managing our resources in alignment with God's Word. We've learned a lot from this book in the past few episodes, so stick around as we continue this enlightening discussion. In the previous episode, I ended with teaching from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Jesus says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. When I was talking about how being rich is not just about getting by, not just about having enough so that you won't starve, but rather something that is a part of what Jesus came and purchased for you, I was referring to the fact that being rich is a part of what Jesus came for. I already said this, but there are 39 lines in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 that are all about money. You can read them on your own. Taking this verse out of its original setting and saying things like, oh, this isn't talking about being rich financially, this is talking about being emotionally rich in relationships. Though these applications are valid, I believe that the verse is actually talking about money. If someone says that it wasn't talking about money, and that God never said he would make us rich, then they are not being honest with the Bible. That is not what these verses say. If you put God first, there's nothing wrong with having a lot of nice things. But this isn't about getting rich for yourself. God told Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 2, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Before you can be a blessing, you have to be blessed. I'm talking as quickly as I can, but I'll get to you in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Jesus says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. In this chapter, Paul speaks to the Corinthians and expresses how much God can provide for them in all aspects of their lives. This verse highlights the belief that God can bless believers with abundance, making sure they have everything they need in any situation. Being sure that God will provide for them means that they will not only have enough, but also have more than enough to do good things and reach their goal. Therefore, it promotes a mindset of trust and dependence on God's provision, which leads to a life full of generosity and kindness. And in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 10, God says, And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. In this chapter, Paul tells the Corinthians to keep the promise they made to give freely when they were first excited about it. He states that if they want to help, they should also be ready to keep their promise no matter what it takes. Paul basically tells them that they should not only want to give, but also do it, showing that they are sincere and honest in their support of others. While in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 11, Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. Paul tells the believers in Corinth to show how willing they are to give by following through on their very first intention of offering funds to help others. He says that having the desire and intention to do something is good, but what counts is actually doing it. Honestly, if you want to be a giver, you have to make a promise to yourself that you will do it. It won't be easy because there will always be something else you could do or get more for yourself. If you don't make a promise to yourself, it won't happen. And then in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 12, Jesus says, For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. That's why God doesn't look at the size of your gift, but at what you have left over after you give. The little poor woman who gave two mites, which is less than a penny, was showing that she gave everything she had. And God said that the poor widow woman gave more than all the rich people. It may not have been true in terms of the amount of money she gave, she may have given the least of anyone, but from God's point of view, the only point of view that matters, she gave more than everyone else because she gave everything she had. God looks at percentages, not amounts. 
And that's the reason why Paul is talking to the church in Corinth about how they should help people in need. He says that being willing to give is very important, because what counts to God is not the amount given, but how sincere and ready the giver's heart is to give. I want to talk about some things in chapter 9, so I'm going to skip some lines. Let me go down to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 19. God says, What is more, he was chosen by the churches to accompany us as we carry the offering, which we administer in order to honor the Lord himself and to show our eagerness to help. And in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 21, God says, For we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of man. If I'm honest about how I'll handle and spend money, that's one thing. But I have to stay honest in front of both God and people. For instance, did you know that when we first started getting mail, we didn't really think about it? We think about it more as we get bigger and more money comes in though. So we have to provide for things honestly, not only in the sight of God, but in the sight of man. And I tell you, if you don't follow this example, God's not going to entrust you with things. You have to follow this example and let me go back to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 20. We want to avoid any criticism of the way we administer this liberal gift. Paul is talking about how much money he has and that he does not want anyone to blame him for giving away 20 cents, a quarter, or a dollar here and there. He hadn't wanted anyone to blame him because he had so much money. He writes more in the next part of this chapter. And now, let go down to 2 Corinthians 9 verse 1 to 2. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. While he's talking, Paul tells the Corinthians that they don't need to hear this from him again because they already know how important and urgent the matter is. He also talks about how excited they were to be a part of this act of kindness, which sets an example for others in Achaia. As a whole, Paul is telling the Corinthians to keep their word to give generously to help other believers in Jerusalem. He is doing this to express how important it is to keep promises and show unity within the Christian community. So my friends, I challenge you to start putting God's kingdom first in your finances and watch as he extravagantly takes care of you. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, God's blessings are not for selfish gain, but for becoming channels of His love and provision. If you found this video inspiring, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more topics like this. See you in the next episodes. God bless you from Elevate in Spirit.